Welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for the lighting. As you can see, I'm in different surroundings. Um, I'm traveling right now and uh, have to make do with what I got here. Uh, but a couple days ago, I put out a short video where I asked the viewers what they'd like to see me react to, uh, what type of video. And uh, one of my most astute students, Foucault and Pascal, offered up this one, which is titled Freeman Lectures, Robert Menard, Luke Dennis on Money. Now this video is an hour and 24 minutes long. I'm certainly not going to sit here and watch the entire hour and a half. Uh, but we can probably get a good gist of, of what these people are about in the first five to ten minutes. As you may or may not know, uh, I teach the grammar technology known as correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar. And what I've encountered in the last five plus years of teaching this to hundreds of people all over the earth is that I've had multiple common law practitioners, you know, and they, and they run the gamut from being, you know, they call themselves sovereign citizens, which is an oxymoron, or freemen on the land, or they will call themselves... You know, they'll use a first name, like, for example, using my name, they'll say, they'll say Jason, comma, space, man, or Michael, comma, space, man. They'll use things like that. And uh, But long story short, whatever they were doing wasn't working for them the way that they weren't having the success that they wanted to get. So they thought they'd try quantum grammar. And some of them, probably 10 to 15 years into studying common law or common lore, as they call it. And it's, you know, very difficult, maybe a cognitive dissonance for them to let go of some of those concepts to come into the domain of fact, which um, is difficult when you base your belief system on a fiction construct, which is what common law is. It's a fiction construct created by fiction. Fiction. It's using fiction against fiction. Bottom line. That's all it is. Some people have success with it. But, uh, you know, and whatever works, hey, more power to you. If it works for you, cool. Uh, but some people... It just, it's just, it's not getting done what they want to get done with it. So that's why they come to me. In any case, that's my long-winded preface to this video. And we're going to see, I have not watched this. 
we're going to see what this individuals or these individuals, uh, Robert and Luke, have to say, and I'm going to react to it. And before we go any further, yes, for you novice, noob, beginners, I'm well aware that react is no contract. First of all, re means no. If you take that away and you just have act, act is a vowel in front of a consonant. It means no. So I'm just using it in everyday plain English conveyance because I'm not here to be misunderstood. Are you here to misunderstand me? Because if you are, then uh, you can hit the road. Uh, but for those of you who are with the balance of the honor and the grace, with the maintenance of the rule one, rule equal, and with the position of peace and neutrality, please enjoy. Let's begin. Lovely Maria has some if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, when we left off, I was talking about the definition of registration. You're always submitting application for registration for your motor vehicle, for your firearms, for your kids even. What are you doing when you register? Historically, an act of registration was a ship's captain signing over his ship and all the final contents. From a grammatical standpoint, submitting registration. Submitting is no contract. Registration is no contract. Submit means to no mit. Sub means to come under something. Registration means no gestation. Every basic student knows this. However, this guy is playing in the domain of the fiction. So let's see what he has to say. The harbor master for safekeeping until he were to return. Chattel contents included anything that could be party to a contract or subject to a contract. Uh, it included the condemned, slaves, those who were in debt, uh, anything that could be loaded onto the dock essentially was registrable. When you register anything, you are actually signing over title to it to the government until you come back and say, give it back to me, I want it back now. The way they, uh, they consider this a, a benefit is because if the government, uh, who is stronger than you, actually owns it, then someone comes and tries taking it, you've got Big Brother who can come and protect you and your property. But the problem is, when Big Brother starts thinking everything that's registered is now his property, then why register Okay, I see what this guy is saying and what, what, where he's going with it. But I think he's, he's got a little mixed up here. Um, if you go to the post office, using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, as a postmaster, as a federal judge, as a bank banker. When you go to those locations and you have closure on the grammar, and I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I mean closure on the grammar. I mean, you can syntax on the spot. You can give closure to the syntax values that you put on the paper. You can create a correct sentence structure on the spot when you have those things in place when you have all your ducks in a row and you go into that postal station those clerks at the desks are literally your clerks because you are the judge of your document contract postal vessel court venue okay the registration number is a fiction name for the number that you get that certifies the document contract postal vessel court venue that you're putting through their custom clearinghouse. Okay? They are custom clearinghouse brokers. They're middlemen. They're just passing stuff off to get it to point A, to point B, to point C, to point D, or whatever it needs to go. All right? That's it. You're not giving something to the government if you know what government is. Like me, for example. Uh, for my position, what I do, I work with the government. I don't work for the government. I work with the government. I work with everybody that wants to work with me, as long as they're not 
with a warlike volition in the context of the scenario that is presented. So I feel like this guy is trying to say that if you actually go in and register something to the post office, that you're giving it to the government. That is not true. At least from my experience, it's not true. Uh, my correct sentence structure documents, um, I've used the mechanics, the postal mechanics, um, the way they've been used since time immemorial, since the postal service was implemented, uh, the very purpose of it, uh, I've used it and with 100% success. Period. End of story. So I'm not sure what he's talking about. Maybe he's talking about, and he didn't say this, but I'm kind of jumping, you know, I'm guessing that he may be talking about when you file a patent or a copyright or you register something in that fashion. Yeah, then, then what he's talking about would come into play where if you pay money to file a patent now you're giving it to someone or if you register your motor vehicle and by your I mean that in a very loose way uh, because if you have not paid the fee for freight for that vehicle it is not your vehicle unless you've paid it and given closure to that um, then yes I see what he's saying so anyways let's go <clears throat> How many people here, you, you go to court all the time if you read any of uh, uh, judicial judgments, it'll talk about society. Society cannot handle this. This for the good of society all the time. Now, a society, as we've said already, is a number of people joined by mutual consent to deliberate, determine, and act for a common goal. Funny thing about societies, they're legal things. There's a maxim in law that says, if you know not the name of a thing, all knowledge of that thing must perish. So, what's what the does that even mean? Name of your society. The fact is, unless you can tell me the name of your society and a key thing about any society or any societal member, every member of that society will be in 100% absolute unanimous agreement as to the name of their society. They can just pull out a card from their pocket, it's got it right across the top. The Law Society of Alberta, the Law Society of British Columbia. These are actual proper societies. Unless you have a card in your pocket with the word society on it or association, you're not an actual member of any That's society. That's not true. You're Ladies and gentlemen, contract is everywhere and it's everything. If you and me and Tommy, Bobby, Sue, Jane, Anjanette, Dave, Ricardo, Pascal, Joshua, Raven, if we all get together and we shake hands, look each other in the eye and say, let's form a society and it's all verbal, that's contract. We are members of, of a society. I don't need a written card to prove to this guy or anyone else that I'm a member of society. And this gives more evidence to what I'm talking about, that this guy is using fiction against fiction. Fiction wants you to believe that it's not contract unless it's written on paper. That is complete and 100% utter bullshit. Having your contract written in correct sentence structure on a piece of paper is very powerful. Yes, I'm not going to deny that at all. But it's not necessary to create contract or to create joinder. It just depends upon the domain with which you are navigating. Okay? You're not. They don't want you to know this. They talk all the time about you being a member of a society. If someone came to you and said, I'm going to see my best friend. And you said, really? What's your best friend's name? And they went, nah, I don't know. Would they even really have a best friend? No. No court in this land would accept that you are a member of a society unless you knew the name of that society. Human race.
<laughs> Somebody just said human race, and this guy just blew by it. Didn't address it at all. The guy said, you know, when he was talking about if if you don't if you don't have a card with the name of the society on it, you're not a member of society. And then the guy says, human race, meaning as a you know a society of human race. And this guy just totally didn't didn't uh, didn't address that at all. That's hilarious. Believe it or not, I'm not. I'm a free man on the land, but you guys are all, except with the exception of maybe Luke here, who's working on it. You're all considered to be children of the province. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy says he's a free man on the land. To say that, does that mean to say that he's also claiming by rote that he's not a freeman on the sea? This is why I don't talk about land or sea. Who cares? I'm talking about the sea of space. The sea of space encompasses land, sea, underground, overground, space, cosmos, whatever you want to call it. Sea of space encompasses everything. Free man on the land, that is a fiction concept and it is very limiting. <clears throat> the reason they consider it, and this came to my, my attention, we have a friend by the name of Digger. We were in a, a, a mall in the parking lot. He's walking through the parking lot. Cops pull up and they ask him for identification. We've never seen you here around here before. This hey. is in West Van again, eh? And he's dressed <laughs> in his work clothes. You want to know who you are? Identification? Well, I don't have to show you any of that, but you have to show me. Show me your identification. Ladies so and gentlemen. A talk back and well, what is it about these type of people that this guy, I guess his name's Robert Bernard, what is it about these type of people that don't want to credential themselves? Or as he says, identify themselves because we know a pound front of a consonant at the beginning of a word is no contract so i use the word credential why don't they want to credential themselves i've come out in the public over five years ago i credential myself i'm in the public my correct name is in the public my correct uh, visual credentialing is in the public I have no issue when someone asks me, yo, who are you? Or where are you from? I'll credential myself because I have nothing to hide. I have no reason not to credential myself. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Whether the individual asking you that is someone from a certain neighborhood who is basically protecting their turf or whether it's some corporate government bureaucratic peace officer employee vasily asking you to credential yourself who cares credential yourself if you have the confidence in what it is you're doing if you have closure on your knowledge what's the big deal if you have nothing to hide, what's the big deal? Now, some people will say, well, that's a trespass. You know, um, they, they don't have a right to ask me to do that. I don't have to do that. Well, guess what? Guess what's going to happen if you don't do that? Guess what's going to happen? Unless you have an army with you, unless you have the bigger guns and clubs, you're in for a long night. Trust me on that. There are countless YouTube videos documenting the oxymoron sovereign citizens who, in a very hostile manner, confront police officers and give them a hard time, get into pissing contests with them. And, and it's just... To my, you know, <laughs> to my perception, it's just ridiculous. Why would you do that? Why just, why not just credential yourself? 
what what are you doing are you on some secret clandestine mission because if you're on a secret clandestine mission then you're violating rule one rule equal anyways okay then you're up to no good do you see where I'm going with this Guy refuses to provide his identification, says, well, what makes you think I even have such a thing? The cop asks him, so you're not a child of the province. Not a child of I the says, province. No, I'm not. Thank you, sir. Province. P-R-O-V-I-N-C-E. Anyone who is a novice student of correct sentence structure can tell you that P-R-O means no. No Vince. This individual, I can guess, is not... Definitely not a student of etymology. Why do they get to consider you as a child of the province? Listen, good timing. No, no, ask. Ask aloud. I'm going to... What, what was your question? The reason they look at us as a child, or as the, the child of the province, is because you ask permission to engage in perfectly lawful activities. Mummy, can I have a cookie? Would mummy ask for a cookie? No, mummy would just go take a cookie. She's an adult. If you ask permission to engage in perfectly lawful activities when you have no obligation to do so, they get to look at you as a child of the province because you haven't even grown up in your own mind yet, in your own heart, that you don't need permission from anyone to engage okay. in a lawful activity. Ladies and gentlemen, I will draw to a close there. There's really no need to go any further with this. I agree with what that guy just said. Okay? Although he's coming at it from a different angle. The basic tenet is do no harm. We, as a whole, have been brought up in society to participate with an authoritarian construct. Meaning... We're always looking over our shoulders. Am I allowed to do this? Is it okay to do that? And this comes from, from my perception, religion, which is, you know, specifically monotheism, which is an authoritarian construct. Once you gain autonomy here in your psyche and in your heart, you don't need to ask permission from anyone to do anything you can do what you want as long as you're not harming anyone else you're good to go that's all there is to it think about this though when you do things when you just in your daily navigations go down the street to go to the store this that or the third do you think you need to use correct sentence structure to do to go down to the store to buy a loaf of bread? No, you don't. Where correct sentence structure comes in is when the bureaucratic trespass comes in. That's where correct sentence structure is needed and is 100% successful uh, by my experience. Now what that fellow was talking about there and what he was going to go into for another hour and a half is just basically using fiction concepts against fiction concepts. Now, the problem with that, the problem that I found with that is that it requires a continuous program of studying fiction laws and statutes and things like that to keep up with it. Because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? If you have success using common law against the fiction in their own legal fiction court system, they will adjust themselves to that success that you had. And the next time you come around, I'm guessing that same tactic or technique will not work. You will have to find something different. And you will have to constantly keep finding those needles in those haystacks. And the fiction can continuously concoct haystacks to put in your way 
and then you have to constantly look and constantly look but if you learn quantum grammar and you get closure on it you don't have to worry about needles or haystacks because you basically have the one thing that can guarantee the ages, the safety of your vessel construct in any scenario. And I'll say it flat out. That's how it works. But you have to get that elusive closure on the grammar. Now there are several ways available to you to do that. For the maintenance of the rule one rule equal, if one presents a problem, one must also present a solution. So the problem is dealing with the fiction system. Being able to contract in the fiction without basically being raped. Being a steward of your contracts rather than being controlled by them. That's where correct sentence structure comes in. It's very easily done once you get the closure on the grammar. So as I mentioned, there are several ways to do that. There's this channel right here, which there's over 500 videos for you to study. If you want to learn the grammar yourself, you would have to be your own guide. You'd have to do your own studying and move at your own pace. And then the other option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a correct grammar workshop. It's not easy. It's not for everybody. As I've said before, this stuff is only going to be learned by the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. Literally. Because not everyone has the intestinal fortitude to actually follow through and get closure. But if you are one of those, if you think you have the gumption to do this go ahead put your right foot forward email me apply for the workshop I'll schedule a 10 to 15 minute video consultation you can ask me whatever you want to ask me and trust me I will answer you and give you closure or you can study the 500 or so videos on my YouTube channel where all my correct sentence structure knowledge has been gathered and given as a gift to you, my fellow mankind. If you want to support this channel, go ahead and click the join button below this video. There are two tiers of membership. The second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. I hope you've enjoyed this reaction video. I'm actually on vacation right now. I'm enjoying myself. Having some uh, mango margaritas. But I thought I'd put some content out there for my loyal members and viewers. Much love to everyone out there who really, really has the correct volition of the balance of the honor and the grace. The maintenance of the rule one rule equal in the position of peace and neutrality and they really want to learn this my hat is off to you because not everybody can do it and not everybody's going to do it thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one